starting out immediately differently than the last game. Hey, it's not inside a bag. Well, hello, and welcome to Milk Outside of a Bag. I played the first game, Milk Inside of a Bag. It was basically about a girl who is very traumatized, mentally ill, has watched her dad fall outside of a window. First, starting warning. There's some sensitive topics that carry throughout this game, some including death, suicide. I think there was a flashing light warning. So the opening sequence is basically a pretty solid summary of the entire last game other than like a deep talk finding out that dad died jumping jumping outside of a window the mom had to have murdered him because why else would the daughter be so afraid of mom so we're going to just go in let's find out what the milk outside of a bag's got to do with anything Animation's definitely already a lot better. Oh, is this starting immediately after bringing home the milk? I'm walking to my room, trying not to look around. Playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls of the ceiling. They don't look playful. One of those shadows whistles past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track a time, spinning in, my joy spinning in a joyful dance. Okay, so... Where we left, her medicine was finally settling into her head, and she was starting to feel that little bit of bliss that she was saying. So if this is her mind clear and full bliss. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. Yeah, this is exactly right after we left off in the first game. I walk past the kitchen on my way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming in through the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. Aha, that's so silly. It's ap I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. <laughs> I know for sure that we never have any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure of that. I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. Don't you get it? I've waved my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursuers, but then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare the to death someone who's already dead what if it actually revives them no 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 i don't want that what do i do i couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open as i expected there was no living corpse inside but there was a bag of milk i bought today sitting right in the middle of the table watching me with its unblinking eyes i stare back nothing happens although what exactly did i expect gratitude have i done something that warranted it a bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mom's kitchen on the other hand nobody would drink milk inside the store which means it is the safest place in the world 
and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. Imagine feeling that much guilt over buying some milk. Hey. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops from moving. Are we talking about paralysis demon? I'm hoping. But I'm also not hoping. After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again? I stare questioning into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. The creature squeezes my hands until its veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where eyes should be, ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. That's kind of like what the mom looks like. It's kind of what the mom looks like in the last game, so are we thinking that it's mom and her illness is making her mom seem like an evil demon because the mom killed the dad? This is my theory. This is just my theory. Oh god. Oh god. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the bare discernibility crawling under my skin in the ring of tightly sprung snooze. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. It hurts. A white vein appeared in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and slowly slide to the floor, just like last time. But why, why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of pronouncing words, I vomit thick milk foam. The creature notices and throws itself at me in anger, grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Milk outside of a bag is so much more dangerous than milk in a bag. It should have been kept in the bag. Kill me, kill me. Hysterically screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. Try to imprint every drop fell through my memory so I can gather them all later. I need to remember. I need. A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. Say it. I'll never drink milk. I'll never drink milk ever again. I say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all of the needed preparations. I wash my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. There was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I love anticipating the inevitable moment when reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slip away. As if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another after another, until there was nothing left, and now I tap to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it.
After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny, but I have no idea how they work separately since I've always swallowed them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it. To twirl it between my fingers, then not chew on it. I do anything to stall just for a little bit more. A smooth protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky semi-transparent film, but I could still discern its contents. So what do we have inside of you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and to my surprise, it turns out to be a soft squishy. I press harder, and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pill flies straight into the waste bin, and I rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. I don't know why I'm struggling so much to read it. It's like I feel something here, like here. I was like, I feel the need to whisper. Just whisper. I don't know why. I don't know what's wrong with me. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy, but it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. This pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar flash, and I study every pill from all of its sides, and I find a reason not to swallow it. <coughs> I invent my own medicine instead by enjoying swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, I don't think you feel alive anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to somebody right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyways. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. Well, I'm right here. Hey. It hasn't even been an hour, dummy. You know we were only supposed to meet once per day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are usual headaches, dizziness, and exhaustions. Basically, nothing I can handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. Are you even a little bit happy? Not even in the slightest bit? Softer for today? Well, I guess you are too. No. No, you're swallowing a bunch of pills. No, I'm not happy. Well, then I'm not happy either. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now, alright? You stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you at all. Hmm? I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. He, I can't even imagine how angry you are right now. Not really. I'm pretty concerned. Yeah, I'm all beside myself. What made you so happy all of a sudden? And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple hours ago? I don't know what you mean. Stop lying, stop lying, stop lying. For this one. No, uh, I still don't understand. Whatever, unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic so. <laughs> Oh, dang, that's mean. She just whines and whines all the time. Did you not see what was inside of her head? Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while... To I'm sorry, but I think my ma'am is... Trying to kill herself? She's just swallowing all the pills. So you're the one calling all the shots now? Yeah. Well, let's see how long that can last. Well, see ya. Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, and we'll decide what to do with you. Mirror again. 
I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by sneery looks in the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling, but then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy smile, bares her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind, two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. My head is splitting apart now. Mine were two after that bath. How do you feel? Sorry for being rude. It's not your fault. It's never your fault. Fine. You can keep blaming yourself, but don't overdo it. I, I don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah. You ought to know how challenging it was for me. I remember. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Undoubtedly. Whatever it was, it was your decision. I don't know the situation of the drugs, if they're forced by the mom or therapist, so I'm going with that one. Does it even matter? Yes? No? And what do you think? I mean, yes. You shouldn't mess with that stuff. Somehow I find it hard to believe. Now why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it in triple force. It hurts so bad. Just drink your medicine already or I'll stop talking to you. You know what to do. Dejected, I reached out from the shelf with my medicine. I saw the pills one after another, chasing the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood and transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worse than my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This word is used so much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. I can clearly hear water and metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of all that. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rear rearing its claws from somewhere below waiting for me to lose focus do you want to talk about it no I've had enough talking but do you want then hey I, I just want to lie down for a bit even if the ceiling is bound to collapse it won't be today dot She wants to be left alone. Just leave her alone. You can't force her. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my court board. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another, pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can you make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts. They're fireflies now. I start whirling all over the ceiling to their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start losing my patience. Enough. I hate you. I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. Fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. The stable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So it doesn't bother you? Should it? No? Yes. No. A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone. 
if you have a reason for that. Did you have a reason, didn't you? You surely get better, believe me. And now, start over. You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyways. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. I raised my eyes and I looked at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. Forget about them and go to bed. I glance around the room. There are too many places for creatures of small fireflies to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a rumble. The clock just hit midnight, so it's already running late. It's so late already. I'm just adding words. But I can't go to bed right now. Will you help me? Please tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know better than anyone else. That's the thing. I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I think I made the wrong choice. I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They are so itchy. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. I see an eye butthole. Did you drink milk? Did he bring milk? I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, my eyes will stop itching. I wonder if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, my eyelashes one after, if I tear out all my eyelashes one after another, what have you done? I need to gather the glass and then, then I need to have a bath and then, here, drink some milk. I stand in the middle of my room. I see, wait, I just thought it was a good idea to let her, I don't know, tell her that, it, I don't know what I thought, but it was a bad idea. I stand in the middle of my room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth, or I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. And my thoughts are hiding from me. To be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess I'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no. If I even make the smallest of messes here, I feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. I don't and I won't. Alright then. So we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside of a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. There is a train. Yeah. My oh my. I have an idea. Last time becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point and click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look into the different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And you want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. I start panicking as soon as I get multiple choice situation. I just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. I've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Do what you want. Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision too. Let's begin already. I go into the middle of the room and look around. Where would I be hiding if I was a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey, what? Look down. I look down after a moment. A small bag of light warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie! 
Wowie. There's smoke coming from your clothes. The... Hey, Firefly. I carefully grab the Firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. It's time to come home now. As if it was an ordered firefly drifts up circles around my head, but it flies it to my ear with the speed of a bullet. It I don't have words. Ah. Look at plot. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatrical yawn and hold out my arms to my sights. One, two. Then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. I take a hesitant stance. What was it? Heels together, toes apart. Whatever. I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine. You have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at his hands for too long. At first, I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction, then they disappear altogether. And then things start to always get messy. Last time I saw a pair of my eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? A mess. Well, are you counting down? What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Well, forget it. Do you see a firefly? No. Nope. Let's continue searching then. Oh, um. Oh, heal. It's not easy to get out of here. Oh, I was trying to escape. Oh, wait, I already turned it on. Heater? Ceiling, I hear countless number of small lakes marching inside an AC unit. Phew. Oh, well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We'd better look somewhere else. Eee, why would Coca just be there? Have you forgotten? You were the one that told me to stick on my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't disappear like that. So they occupied this place. Do you understand now? I don't. I don't. Let's continue searching. Ma'am, I finished searching. I'm done. I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, it wasn't supposed to be happy anyways. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going to go back to the starting point. Nothing changes at all. A zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much about it. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony. Breathe in some air. Somehow those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. I don't think it's a good idea. What? This may sound silly, but I feel like someone is watching me. All right, let's say here. There's no way somebody cares about you that much. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? What's with the silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. But that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. I took myself outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time, still being me. Ridiculous. Like milk outside of a bag. And jet. And jet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then. No? I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What's that? I blurted out way too much today. A lot of stuff had... Forget. I don't blame you. But was it really necessary? You'll see tomorrow. No. 
I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine. What's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratch my wrist and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute. You're afraid to tell me. Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that something bad happens. Something way worse will happen. Stop. I get it already. Still. I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I wrap myself in my blankets, even though the electric heater is working, keeping me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyways, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lie down, and start imagining that I'm watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and I always look sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places, bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Then one day, I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and I couldn't move for a while. And then the silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And, well, deserved, I guess. I felt like I was caught in one of the biggest lies in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, eyes stayed there. I guess they like this place. They always follow me awake, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared, and I can't argue with them. But today, today, well, I, is it too scared to tell me? Of course, they're still listening, you know? Use your hands, all right? I say, I start chaotically twirling my fingers, enthusiasm forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh. I was trying so hard here. Don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax. Nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to. But I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Let's talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. I'm meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. Fine. Close your eyes. You won't get it. Uh oh. Back to the first game vibes. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley, an awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the other side. I turn around to see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You are late. Um, who are you? boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. And he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. Do you have a name? My name's... Tresca? Tresca? I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. Besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know for one. About what? They're obligated to escort me to the store. Tresca says that and strikes the victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You understand that refusal is futile. Aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with the company? He's weird, constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko, and his name is stupid. Are we going, or what? You can go. I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts a cutting smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. He grabs my hands without hesitation. I don't even... Have time to retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine. It's not for the fact that Tresca was walking way faster than me. And on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and he went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip looked a lot longer than it should. 
After reaching the store's doors, we were greeted by the sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. I had the bright idea to indicate their working hours in this way. They'll probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs changes the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah? You're so annoying. Such rather than being boring. How old are you, anyways? None of your business. Ah, and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of that brat, but a scary looking man suddenly be behind, appeared behind a glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of going across the long row of canned products, we realized that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I own. Um, maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently towards one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I? I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets. But my god, for nothing, friend freezes in place. Looking the customer straight in the eyes, I hurry toward them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um, if he's yours, please get him away from me. Yes, I'm sorry. I grab Cheska's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar, and his eyes pop. He is also shaking. Only when we turn the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I, I got so scared, he said. What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresco starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hands. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Neither do I. Where did we go? Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean. Who, me? Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drat. The edge of my vision, I see the store staff hang a new sign at the door. There you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I manage to visit the milk department after finding out where it is. Hey, you, move. I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that is formed after Tresca. I squeeze through toward him. What happened? boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. Cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue not in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Jessica starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a Two. But you heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a blank note to the cashier, a much higher value that is needed, even counting all the stupid fees. I grab the milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving Tresca. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right towards a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks the silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's expression. The light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes up. You know? He turns away from the path and walks straight towards the highway with determination. I stare at his back confused. It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. Oh, I've missed you. I'm so lost. I am left confused with an empty feeling without an accomplished feeling. 
I loved it though. 10 out of 10. Nice game. <laughs> I'm going to end this here. I'm trying to find some sort of closure. There is no third game yet. It came out last year. I am left confused. I am left lost. But I am left... I don't even know what I'm left with. Thank you guys for watching. I don't even know if you should drink milk. I don't know if this is... Dairy commercial. I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm lost. <laughs> Please.